Here's the three biggest problems people have when taking pictures in a museum. Number one, it's usually pretty dark. Most artifacts in museums are kept in low light environments to help with preservation. Number two, people are taking the photos with their phones. Now, are these impressive little cameras? Yeah, for what they are. But when it comes to shooting like the intricate details of what you what you find impressive about you know artifacts in a museum, our cell phones just they're not the best options out there, but it's what people have. Now number three, a lot of these artifacts are really, really small. For example, take a look at this. Now, I'm actually not holding anything there, but you thought I was because we've all been into a museum and thought, wow, that's really small. That's what she said. <laughs> now, to give you an actual example, take a look at this button. Now, this is one of 30,000 buttons that we found on board the Arabia. And as someone who spent hours and hours cleaning these little things as a kid, I can tell you from firsthand experience just how truly impressive they are. So I thought today, I would do my best to give you an up-close view of 1850s buttons. And I promise, it's a lot cooler than it sounds. That is that. Now, buttons have been around for a pretty long time, but the story of our ceramic buttons actually starts 16 years before the Arabia sank. In 1840, Richard Prozer, Prozer? Is it Prozer or Prozer? Richard actually received a patent in 1840 for a new process of shaping ceramic buttons. The material Prozer used was a very fine dry powder. They would place the powder in a steel die and compress it. This operation produced perfectly shaped buttons ready for the kiln. The colored patterns were applied using what's called the transfer method that employed tissue paper printed with the desired design. The tissue was dampened and padded down on the buttons before they were fired in the kiln. Now this particular approach, this method of creating buttons was revolutionary. It streamlined the process to the level that most folks were making buttons around 12 to 18, up to 25 buttons in one minute. These buttons were dominantly produced from 1840 to the early 1900s. At the time, they were referred to as agate buttons. But the resemblance to the patterns of calico fabric eventually led to most folks referring to them as calico buttons. Now seeing the buttons on display, it's wonderful. They're right up next to the glass, so people can get pretty close to seeing them, but even with this amount of distance, I don't think people are really seeing the detail and the color that these buttons have. So I've brought a few of these buttons back into my office, and what I'm doing is shooting these buttons with what's called focus stacking. So basically what this is, is I am taking several different photographs of these very tiny little buttons with a macro lens, but I'm changing the focus ring so each different plane of the button is actually in tack sharp focus. Then I'm bringing all of them into some software that automatically analyzes the sharpest points of the frame and blends them together to form one ultra sharp image. On board the Arabia, we found, like I said, about 30,000 of these buttons, and not just these calico ceramic style buttons that most people think about. We actually found metal, glass, wood, rubber. The Wow, the rubber artifacts, that's, that's a whole video in and of itself. Interesting little side note, until the 19th century, most of the folks who were utilizing buttons were men. Hooks and lacing were more normal for women's clothing, but around the mid 1800s, right around the time of the Arabia, that's when women became the dominant consumer of buttons. Okay, truth be told, it's not a button, but at the same time, I saw it and I thought, it's really cool, so might as well shoot it.
unfortunately a button is a pretty simple item to actually shoot in this focus stacking approach, but as I was doing it, all I could think about is what else should I take photos of like this? So if you have any suggestions, if you have any thoughts, or if you've been to the museum before and there was that one artifact that you'd love to see shot like this, uh, jot it down in the comments below, hit the subscribe and the little bell button, that way you'll get notified the next time we upload more videos. And not too long ago, I actually did an entire video about an 1850s product photography shoot. So if you're interested in that, Click on this little button right here and I'll see you over there.